Thank you for joining us. Today, we're speaking about something I'm very excited about, and that is a new project we're working on called the Myopia Podcast. We're going to be speaking about the purpose and why we came about this decision of introducing this new project to you. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Kading, and uh, I've met many of you, and many of you have been uh, participating in the Optometric Insights show and, uh, and logging in and watching us. And we're excited to introduce a new podcast uh, to our channel called the Myopia Podcast. Um, we're going to be speaking about some of the some of the great things that are happening in the world of myopia management. I personally have been involved with myopia management uh, since my residency in 2005, 2004, 2005, and uh, have been doing it in practice ever since then. I remember my first... Uh, uh, orthokeratology meeting that I went to um, and talking about the excitement of it. So as many of you know, uh, myopia is uh, the other global pandemic, which started far beyond, uh, far before the current pandemic that we're encountering. Uh, we know that myopia is on the rise. You know, the statistics are uh, that, you know, it used to be 25% of the population in the United States. Now it's well above 40% of the population has myopia. And we know that by 2050, 50% uh, of the world's population will have myopia. And uh, in places like China, up to 90% of Chinese students um, complete schooling with uh, nearsighted refractive air. Other parts of the world, 97% uh, in South Korea, and just some astonishing numbers here as we go worldwide. Uh, we know that if you have a parent who has myopia, that you're, uh, you're three times more likely to develop it. And if you have two parents that have it, you're six times more likely to develop myopia. And, you know, the younger you develop myopia, the worse it's going to be for you. Uh, children who develop myopia in the ages of six or seven are, you know, six to seven times uh, have a greater uh, risk factor of developing high myopia. So some major things that are happening, you know, it's not just these uh, genetics, you know, we, we've come to realize that genetics may not be playing a major part in the development of myopia, but yet those parents who have myopia may be doing things similar, their children may be doing sim similar things that cause them to develop it. We know that myopia progresses about 60% uh, less in the summer than it does in the fall and the winter, maybe begging us to understand a little bit more of what outdoor uh, activities are important and why we should be spending time outdoors and why that's all happening is something we're going to be digging into in the, uh, in, in the podcast. And, you know, Myopia was when I when I was growing up was just a nuisance, a refractive correction. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing refractive correction myself. Uh, I am a myope, um, and it was just kind of a, a a nuisance to have myopia. And uh, you know, we've we've kind of come to understand some really important things about myopia progression and why myopia may not be a safe thing. Uh, a good uh, colleague of ours who's going to be a guest uh, on the Myopia podcast in, I believe, episode three or four is uh, Mark Bullimore. And Mark and uh, uh, Noel Brennan put together a perspective on myopia that uh, each diopter matters. And they reviewed five large studies of 21,000 patients, and they demonstrated that slowing myopia by one diopter will lower the risk of myopic maculopathy by uh, 40%, I, I believe it was, regardless of the refractive error. And you know, we'll, we'll check with Mark when we speak with him about that. But these risk factors that are going up, and if we can reduce one diopter, we can reduce the progression substantially. Um, another study that uh, was looking at um, you know, risk factors for uh, uh, for refractive correction increasing showed that even with one to three diopters of myopia, your risk, you had an increased odds ratio risk of 
two to three per times, retinal detachment three times in just that low amount. Obviously, we know with higher amounts of myopia, that's way higher, 44 percent uh, times odds ratio for retinal detachment, 126 times odd ratio for myopic maculopathy. So if we can stop the progression or slow the progression so that we can keep children into lower amounts of myopia, all the better. And if we can keep the eyeball from elongating, it's so key. Uh, we had a ha, have already recorded a great discussion with Aif Vanderwart about this. Aif's going to be, I don't know, episode four or five uh, in the Myopia podcast about eyeball elongation and the concerns that we have. There is hope and we know that, right? We've got some really good discussions coming up. We've uh, spoken with Jeff Walleen about uh, myopia, myopia progression and ways that we can slow it down, discussions about atropine and soft multifocals. Um, and we know with atropine, we could slow down the, the progression, you know, depending on the study you look at, you know, 30 to 60, 70%. Uh, we know with soft multifocals, you know, somewhere in the, the, the 30 to 50, 60%, depending on the study that you look at. Uh, orthokeratology kind of being this mainstay that we think of with regards to or, uh, myopic progression, um, you know, also showing, you know, 30 to 80, 90%, depending on the study that you're looking at. Some great information around that. We uh, talk with Randy Kojima. He's going to be in one of the first five or six uh, 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 podcasts that we've already recorded, um, talking about improving the accuracy of our uh, topographical maps with our ortho K patients. And what do we really want to be looking for? You know, things like spherical aberration and uh, coma. Are they good things? Are they bad things? So I'm excited to share that with you. And then in the future, we're going to be discussing where spectacle lenses come into play. Uh, you know, we've got multiple different spectacle lenses already approved around the world, not in the United States currently, but in Canada. Uh, and where do spectacle lenses come into this equation? How is that going to be affecting uh, our practice? How is that going to be affecting the myopia world? Um, how do they come into play for those of us who are already doing myopia management? So I'm excited to be able to share these different things with you. Um, you know, we've uh, we've really got some incredible things on the books as uh, as as I've already shared. Our uh, first episode outside of this one is uh, is dedicated to, to my mentor, uh, Patrick Caroline, and we're going to be reviewing the history of myopia management. If you're not aware of Patrick Caroline and Craig Norman, they've put together uh, a history of Contact Lens Museum. Uh, and it's located in Oregon, and I've been there. It's incredible. And Patrick and, uh, and Craig have really dedicated a good portion of what they're focusing on is curating this museum and understanding the history of things. So I thought no better person to go to than Patrick to share with us a little bit about why we are where we're at and how we got here, looking back at the history of myopia management. And then also, uh, I did interview already Craig Norman, speaking to him about some future things, like where are we going? What are things going to look like in, in the future? So we're excited to uh, be able to share that episode with you. So a lot of things on the book, we're already talking about how to enhance our own myopia practices through the discussions I've already had with these myopia experts. Um, it's, you know, already been ma making changes in how I'm seeing my myopia management patients. I'm excited as a community for us to be able to share this information. We're going to be speaking with some individuals who are already developing huge communities. Uh, Dwight Ackerman from, uh, uh, you know, he, he's, he's created this online platform uh, with review of myopia management. He's going to be joining us. Uh, and we're going to be uh, looking forward to ways that we can understand the global impacts and the global aspects of myopia management as we're talking to people all around the world. So I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, hopefully you will uh, be able to join us. 
make sure to hit the like and subscribe. And it really helps us with our algorithms. If you can share your perspectives in your reviews, if you can go in and, and comment and review. So like, and subscribe, let us know what you're looking forward to learning about uh, and how we can be more impactful in helping you in clinical practice understanding what research is all about and uh, seeing where we go from there. So thank you for joining me for this episode. And I look forward to sharing with you uh, what we're learning in the myopia world on the myopia podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.